Hi, everybody. Welcome to this session um, promoting Wikiglam projects in Latin America. Um, for those who don't know me, I am Patricia Diaz Rubio, and I am the executive director of Wikimedia Chile. But I also um, I am uh, personally very engaged in promoting open culture um, policies and strategies and projects uh, in Chile, but also very dedicated to discussing these subjects and topics around our region, around Latin America. So um, there's an etherpad that it should be linked in the chat where you can put all of your questions, comments, uh, ideas, or anything that you would like to share uh, with me and with the audience. I'll read it uh, very thoughtfully uh, after the session, but I'll also be trying to collect or uh, to answer your questions uh, after the presentation. Um, my presentation is not that long, honestly, to be honest with you. Um, so I'm leaving some space at the at uh, at the end of the session for us to chat and to and to interact a little bit uh, as uh, the platform allowed us, right? So um, we are going to begin. <laughs> let's see if this works. Okay, let's going to click again. Okay, so uh, before jumping directly to this, uh, the topics of this session, I want to show you or explain you a little bit how it, I'm going to present you uh, this, um, these topics, right? Uh, first, I'm going to start with a little context um, and try to explain why this is, why this is something that uh, I care about and why this is something that I would like to share with you. Uh, then I'm going to present you a little diagnosis that I have been creating or co-creating with uh, other uh, Wikimedians, uh, regional Wikimedians. And finally, I'm going to share with you some ideas and strategies uh, for Wikiglam projects um, that I have learned <laughs> working with uh, my, my Latin American colleagues. So, uh, well, the context, right? Why talking about Wikiglam in Latin America? Um, I would like to situate a little bit my own experience as an open glam or Wikiglam advocator in Chile and in Latin America. Um, well, I am a social communicator and I have a diploma in cultural heritage promotion. And since 2018, I've been leading Wikimedia Chile. And since I arrived, and to the movement, I realized that uh, Open Glam or Wiki Glam was a very recurrent project or topic within Wikimedia affiliates, right? Uh, we have education uh, programs, we have community programs, and we normally have Wiki Glam or Open Glam uh, programs and projects. So for me, it was very, let's say, natural or spontaneous, <laughs> uh, the idea to engage in these projects and to start developing interesting things with GLAMs or cultural institutions, right? Uh, yet, uh, I found very quickly <laughs> that it was very difficult to develop those projects or, or even connecting with GLAMs. It was um, something very hard to do. Um, I discovered that institutions were very reticent to work with us as Wikimedia Chile and uh, that for them Wikimedia projects were whether unnecessary or too complicated or unknown and even for those who knew us, uh, for those institutions who had worked with Wikimedia Chile in the past before I arrived, uh, that they Understood, we understood Wikimedia initiatives or projects or collaborations like a one-time thing. So they were not very enthusiastic about the idea to um, re-engage or to give a certain continuity to these projects, um, which, which, which was very frustrating <laughs> for me. And, and I also faced the difficulty that um, I didn't have or, or, or it was hard for me to find concrete examples of regional successful projects to show them and to um, invite them to join these initiatives. Sorry, my, my phone just, I, 
Okay. <laughs> so um, I was thinking why it's so hard to find this regional um, examples of successful Wikiglam projects. So I decided to ask my colleagues why this why this is so hard why um it's just me or maybe there's something else here so talking to them i i realized that this was not um just a wikimedia chile thing right that executing wikiglam projects in latin america was a hard thing to do uh talking with them i realized that we all had the same problems that GLAMs were very reticent to work with us or with other open knowledge um, organizations or initiatives. And that when this project ex existed, um, when my colleagues arrived to, to have these projects or to, to develop these projects, uh, they were not representative of the amount of work and efforts that they used to put on them. So they were normally very small projects and um, just a few number of content. So um, it was not very representative of the of the efforts that they they develop that they develop. So um, the objectives or the the things that I wanted to to do, knowing this uh, situation. And, and this is the, the thing that I want to share with you, is that I wanted to understand um, which were the experiences that uh, Wikimedia regional affiliates were having around Wiki, Wikiglam projects, uh, identify the arguments that regional glams used to question or to, uh, I don't know, to take some distance from Wikiglam projects. And also, the most important thing, trying to create or propose common strategies to face those limitations or those um, um, or the arguments that this institution just to give gave us uh, from a regional perspective. So just like I said in the beginning, I tried to build a sort of like a diagnosis. Um, this is a collective diagnosis. This is not only my work. This is the this is the result of a lot of conversations that I've been having with uh, my colleagues from Argentina, uh, Peru, Bolivia, Colombia, Venezuela, Brazil, and Mexico. So it's just not, and Uruguay as well, it's not only a Chilean thing. Okay. So um, talking with my regional colleagues, just like I said, we identified four main limitations or difficulties for engaged Wikiglam projects in our countries. Uh, limited resources, Glam institutional structures, misleading conceptions about going open, and finally, a certain prevalence of a global north perspective on how Wikiglam uh, looks like. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about these four um, reasons that we found. Oh, sorry. Well, first of all, oh, this, this went crazy. This is going crazy. Uh, okay. Okay, here we are. Um, well, limited resources, right? Um, as many clams in Latin America are public or depend on public funds, they normally lack of resources to invest in infrastructure, technology, staff training, or even in the maintenance of their buildings. Just like the fire on the um, museum in Rio, de, in Rio de Janeiro or in the Cinematheque in Sao Paulo recently showed us, right? Um, and this is a this is a very regional re reality. And this lack of resources also affect GLAM practitioners. Uh, their schedules are normally overload, they are frequently underpaid, and they don't have many um, opportunities, time, or let's be honest, energy to uh, train or, uh, or learn new things like um, well, you know, open strategies or open projects or open policies. Um, as a result, uh, 
going digital, right, which is key to uh, to create and to engage Wikiglam projects, is still very uh, it's a it's a situation that is still very undeveloped within these institutions. And even though we have some successful experience in Colombia or in Chile, uh, the truth is that many of these institutions need a lot of support, still need a lot of support on preserving digital copies of their assets and collections. The second reason that we identified is uh, GLAM's institutional structures. Um, because regional GLAM practitioners are rarely involved in copyright or legislation dis discussions, even though uh, these uh, discussions or these policies really affect the way in which they work, and of course the administration or impact that uh, their collections have. Uh, in, in Latin America, normally these decisions pass directly through legal departments or high-run executives, uh, and they are not consulted with technical or specialized professionals who are the ones that we normally um, con contact or connect with uh, when developing these structures. And this structure, this uh, institutional structure, um, which is very vertical, and this is quite common within clams, especially those who uh, belong to the public sector, make harder for us as Wikimedians to reach those decision makers and engage them in the wiki ethos. And as many of you know, if decision makers are not engaged in wiki glam or open glam projects, projects won't succeed, unfortunately. I'm going to pass to the next um, topic. A third um, difficulty that we found, that we have found, is that um, it seems to that some glam practitioners have um, some misleading conceptions about what going open uh, could mean for them. Uh, they normally fear that going open or even going online, um, in, uh, it will translate uh, into the to the situation that they might lose control over their collections. Um, we have heard that they fear that their collections will be used wrongly or uncontextualized or without their permissions or even commercially, which is a, a highly no-no uh, with some glam practitioners, especially or at least in the Chilean case where glam practitioners tend to be very conservative about their role. But talking to them, we have also identified that they fear losing their leading role or their particular role in, a, in the Wikiverse, for example, where everybody can participate and where there's no mediation. And I say it like this because we know that that's not true, right? That um, going uh, digital online or open does not mean that mediation is going to it's not going to be necessary anymore um glam practitioners that we have met fear that they won't be needed any longer and sadly that fear it's um express in a lot of negativity or even content uh, towards wikimedia initiatives or at least that's um, that has been our experience. I've been called a little bit of everything. <laughs> Extract cultural extractivists that I want to take advantage of institutions and some other things that many of you already have heard from me. Uh, I'm going to pass to the next. Okay. And finally, a fourth um, limitation. It's uh, the prevalence of a, of a certain global north perspective on um what the, how wiki glam looks like or how it should looks like should look like and in the region in latin america uh talking with my colleagues um i realized that we have taken awareness that this concept does not make too much sense for us you know the glam uh, acronym but first of all because it's, it is in english right so naturally it doesn't make too much too much sense for us 
but also because it tends to be too narrow and do not um, represent the diversity of things that we do when we do wiki glam projects. Um, and I think that we are very clear about the necessity to create a new concept or an alternative concept that could really reflect the work that we do with cultural and artistic assets um, and traditional collections, but also with other types of cultural, doc uh, cultural document or pieces like um, uh, media or, or newspapers or photographs, but also the work that we do with communities, stories, with ancestral and artistic knowledge, with places and memory sites which, you know, are a huge vector in Latin America. So, well, this is the diagnosis. <laughs> now I would like to share a few ideas and strategies uh, to promote this, let's say, open culture, uh, wiki glam projects, or whatever the name that we want to we want to choose for call it. Um, and these are, these are all ideas and strategies that I have learned working with uh, my regional colleagues. Oh, it's not okay. okay. So the first um, idea or the strategy to, to create those projects, even though uh, even even though we have already identified all these difficulties, we we want to keep promoting these projects anyway, right? So um, the first strategy or idea is trying to identify uh, what glams need uh, in general and uh, how we can eventually help them in those needs in those needs with the resources that we have as Wikimedia affiliates, structures, chapters, initiatives, whatever. Um, because understanding that they, they, they are lacking a lot of resources, right? No, you know, like that resources are very limited, uh, within GLAMS. They have a lot of needs and we have some resources that can help them, um, to overcome those limitations, right? So, uh, in Wikimedia Chile and in Wikimedia Argentina, for, for example, we have been, um, focusing a lot on uh, training sessions on open culture, on what open culture means, for example, to try to uh, help practitioners to understand what going open really means so they can eventually be motivated or even uh, engage in particular projects uh, with us. We also um, invite you, if you are also thinking about uh, developing these projects, in trying to identify it, oh, and, and develop concrete tools and learning experience to share with GLAMS, right? Because uh, it's really important to create a learning experiences that they could translate into concrete and uh, bounded projects, uh, because that's going to be way that's going to be easier for them to um, translate those ideas to their superiors, right? Uh, the objective of, for example, this activity that Wikimedia Argentina uh, developed was to uh, present them very concrete projects that, could, that they could apply into their institutions uh, because that's uh, more easy to present to others to their bosses, for example, <laughs> than just ideas or notions about what going open means. Focus on smaller scale projects or institutions. Um, uh, this is a very personal reflection, but even though we all want to engage national museums or big collections in our projects, uh, the experience, the regional experience uh, showed us uh, so it's better to start with local institutions in a, a smaller scale. If they are successful, these uh, projects can be later presented or escalated to broader territories or bigger institutions. So uh, even though it 
maybe it's not the ideal thing to start by engaging the national gallery of your country or your territory. Um, you are going to have maybe more impact in, in a smaller community. And, and you can have um, better collaborations in the future if you start with the smaller uh, institutions. Um, a fourth um, strategy or um, suggestion is to centralize some efforts through relevant collaborators. Um, so if we have the chance to work with a big institution or a institution size medium, <laughs> we can collaborate. Um, they, I mean, they, they can, sorry, they could play a hub role uh, by centralizing resources or capacity building experiences and then passing them onto smaller institutions or territories. So for example, we have some experiences in the region where uh, Wikimedia chapters had identified uh, not national but regional institutions like regional museums, for example, and they have training them and then these institutions have, uh, uh, have done the same, training smaller or um, yeah, more community institutions. So like that, we can like, pass the message uh, to uh, a, a broader territory. Also, it's very important to work with local cultural practitioners. Uh, that's fundamental to develop successful and long-standing wiki glam or open glam projects. Engage, engaged practitioners are one of the best types of ambassadors that the Wikimedia movement can have in this um, quest. <laughs> and, and, and having them in our site, in our site represent an enormous collaboration possibility reach out to them and make them feel part of a community. Invite them to your activities, uh, prepare training sessions, especially for them. Uh, try to make in, try to engage them in, in, in your chapter, in your uh, group, in your initiative and somehow they could, that they could really feel that they can be sort of like a bridge between Wikimedia and their institutions. And finally, and this is uh, sort of like a challenge for us as Wikimedians, is try to redefine what Wikiglam means for Latin, for Latin American Wikimedians and our communities. Um, this is an image of a workshop that Wikimedia Colombia uh, launched in 2020 or 2021, I am not sure. But it was a workshop uh, around images of the protests that they had uh, around those those years, political and social protest, um, and and we considered that as a glam type of project, right? Um, because um, for us in Latin America, culture means way more than just uh, the things that happens um, within libraries or or uh, museums. Um, you know, like uh, institutions or, or places or, or practitioners. Um, it's it's uh, culture. We we try to understand culture in a broader um, in a broader way. Uh, it, it it involves uh, the different ways in which our societies express and represent themselves, and their history, and the diversity, and and things that are happening right now today in our streets in our public places so we know that this is a, a huge challenge but um oh sorry but okay <laughs> but understanding that as wikimedians we want to collect um register and preserve all type of content so we have to start seeing culture as um, something bigger, uh, brighter, and, and way more complex, way more complex and diverse than the way that in which we traditionally understand glam projects. And, and this is the invitation that I wanted to, to do to you as well today. Thank you.
thank you so much for for this for this time um i don't know i i'm going to extend this the chat because it's so small that unfortunately you know i don't see very well so um i don't know if you have if you have any questions that you have uh, put on the um on the chat before unfortunately i cannot go back to the chat so if you have any questions or comments please um copy them again <laughs> so i can see that because when i was presenting i wasn't able to see the the the, the chat um but i do agree what with what anna uh is saying that we really need to uh follow this discussion right to keep continuing continue with this discussion um, in Latin America and hopefully in other regions uh, of the world. And um, well, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for being here. If you have any other comments or if it, it's okay if you don't have questions, but if you don't, if you have other comments or I don't know, reflections or anything else, that you would like to share with me or with my regional colleagues, please put it in the etherpad so I can collect them and then share them with them. And, and please, if you can write your name and maybe uh, the city or the country in which you are, um, that, that, that would be really cool for me. And it would allow me to understand, you know, like this map of people interested in this perspective. So, Thank you. And yes, good idea, Scan. We should have a Telegram group. Or I know there's a, a I know that there's a Wikiglam, like global Telegram group. But maybe we should have something more regional or, um, I don't know, <laughs> different, I think. Oh, there's a lot of comments. Uh, thank you, Anna. <laughs> it's that I, uh, let's see. Um, sorry, this is very uncomfortable for you, I, I imagine. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to read it. <laughs> These are all great points. Even for us in the global north, we are struggling many times to display the impact of our Wikiglam. Um, okay. Um, very true. A lot of those in Glams are very touchy about being open. I saw as I saw it firsthand organizing Wiki Loves Africa in Nigeria. Well, we shared we shared the struggle. <laughs> um, agree that the GLAM acronym is too narrow, and even though in practice we embrace it much. Okay, so um, I, uh, some possible terms we could try beyond GLAM, cultural and heritage partnerships, or more generally, memory institutions. Sometimes I use the phrase knowledge in the public interest. Oh, I love that. To describe entities that have a common cause. But few of these are easy to say, like GLAM. Yeah, it works. It sounds good, but maybe not that good for people who's, who does not speak English. <laughs> um... Let's say the smaller institutions can then advocate for you to larger institutions once they see the success. Yeah, that's the idea. <laughs> um, okay. Um, is it hard to explain when institutions are about to open movement? Yes, very hard. Okay, so I ha we have to go. We only have like 10 seconds left. Thank you so much for all <laughs> for coming. I'm looking forward to reading your messages and, and ideas in the etherpad. And thank you. Thank you so much for being here. We'll be in contact. Bye. Gracias. Ciao. Muchas gracias. <laughs>